words through their testimonies. Uh, it's been a delight to uh, also see the various music groups up here this past week. And you are already exploring your calling uh, and living out your calling of uh, testing out your gifts and abilities and, uh, and worshiping God. This morning we have the privilege of having uh, Judge Garrett Page with us. Uh, I was able to pull up your bio here on my uh, iPad, but I will say a little bit about what I learned about you this morning, ready, just in our brief conversation. Uh, Judge Page is uh, passionate for, for God and for his love of the church. He's a bishop, or a deacon, a deacon in his church, Baptist church. Um, and he has a passion for uh, helping youth as well as discover uh, their calling and following the way of Christ. He is uh, the father of three children, two in their twenties and one who's a fourteen-year-old, and he's a proud uh, grandfather of two children as well. <laughs> so we're looking forward to hearing what you have to share with us this morning and uh, hearing about how God has been working in your life, through your career, through your vocation, and uh, hearing what God has placed in your heart for us this morning. Let's welcome Judge Garrett Page. Scratching on my head, it's going to magnify my voice, and it's very, very good to be here. I uh, speak in front of juries when I was a, a, a lawyer for 26 years. Now I have a black robe that I normally wear at this hour, and I'm usually speaking to, and I'm, I am on the criminal unit, so I speak to people that are charged with burglary and robbery and rape and all those bad things that you guys have no idea what it's about, guns and drugs. It's a lot of stuff that I have to take home under my head, my brain. Things that I have to deal with. And one thing that I will tell you for sure is that I have to take all the collective things that I've learned in my life, the, the kaleidoscope of things that I learned when I grew up in Germantown, everything that I learned from my parents, everything that I learned from my spiritual walk, the walk that you are going through at the age of 14 through 18. I'll open up that way. I, I, my name is Garrett Page. I wasn't born a judge. I became a judge. <laughs> I'm a human being just like you. The last time I checked, I woke. This is the thing. And I'm just going to talk to you real, real, for real today. Uh, I woke up this morning. I had eyes to see, ears to hear, feet to walk. And it's a song we sang at my college choir. He bought me such a nice, long way. Let me tell you a little bit about how I got to be a judge in my faith walk. 
As I told you, I, didn't, I wasn't born a judge. You have, to, you have to be elected to be a judge. In this county, in Montgomery County, which is this school situated in Lansdale, is 800,000 residents. I had to be elected by a portion of those 800,000 residents. Montgomery County is the third largest per capita county in the state of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I, before I became a judge, I was the county treasurer. I was in charge of a half a billion dollar budget. I had to deal, I selected all the banks that the county operated with their general fund. I was on the investment committee. I was the chairman of that committee. What I am telling you is, and I can go on and on, I went to Central High School. Then I went to, which is one of the more academic schools in Philadelphia, all boys when I went there. Then I moved, and then I went to Swarthmore College, right in Delaware County. I went to small liberal arts college. Uh, I won't talk about how good it is, go visit it. Some of them you may want to go there. I have a great rose garden, by the way. Then I went to North Carolina Central Law School in Durham, North Carolina. I saw Duke University play. By the way, did they win yet in the NW at the tournament? I don't know yet. What I do know is this is the road that it took me, and then I, then I got involved in politics. Now, I never wanted to be a politician. I hate politics. Some of it's dirty, nasty stuff. A lot of good people in politics. It's about mostly all of you are good people. What happens is people turn inside out. They get wrong with the wrong crowd. And so they turn good and they turn inside out. And then they come in front of me and I have to bang over okay. <laughs> So I'm a pretty good judge. I think I'm a fair judge. That's the main thing that I have to be. I have, a five, I have been on the bench five years and I've seen so much. I've seen a lot in my 58 years of life. My mother was a homeschool coordinator. coordinator at Pastorius Elementary School in Germantown, where I grew up, and my father was a postman. He went on to college and got a degree. Both of them got a degree. My mother got a degree when I was in high school. I helped her. She helped me. I have great parents. They taught me right from wrong, just like your parents teach you right from wrong. You have a great staff here at Christopher Dodd. You are a Mennonite by faith, but I'm a Baptist by faith, but we believe, amen, <laughs> in the same God. The God who plants the sun in the sky and the moon and the stars and galaxies of which we don't even know how many planets there are because God is God by himself. He's sovereign. I can't tell you how he created the brain. He created the enigma of the brain and they say we only use one sixteenth of our brain. I hope I'm using part of my sixteenth right now. <laughs> by the way, as treasurer, I was in charge of of selling doll licenses. Most people don't think of treasure selling doll licenses. And all, all the hunting licenses all across Montgomery County. So every dog tag had my name on it. All the dogs were not named Gary Page. No, no. But this, this is what, this is part of my collective reservoir of who I am. Now, you have to mix your Christian faith with all that uh, worldly things. How you go through school. Those are worldly because you, this is the flesh. And we are all flesh. Most of our body is water, just like the world is mostly water. That's why the moon controls so much. The tides. All of that. But God's in charge of it all. He's in charge of me. He's in charge of what my mouthpiece is telling me. I pray before I came up. What in the world can I tell a 9th through 12th grader? I spoke at my daughter's graduation in the 8th grade last year at Open Door Christian Academy. And I said, what in the world can I tell 8th graders? There, most of you guys are probably saying, tonight, I, I, I can't wait because this clock strikes 10 03 or whatever for my next class. I'm getting out of here like somebody's chasing me. I hope so. that's not true. I don't see no, let me look around. I don't see nobody sleeping yet. Not yet. I hope you don't. Uh, I told you a little bit about my parents. I told you a little bit about my family. I would suggest to you, students, faculty, alumni, that the glue that that took me through it all, despite the fact that I had the good ingredients of the parents that believed in education. They, they didn't pound me over the head. They said, do what you have to do. Do the best you can. Now, I graduated with a pretty high average in high school. I went into, which enabled me to get to a, one of the top liberal arts colleges in the country, Swarthmore. And then I shifted gears and went to a traditionally African-American law school in North Carolina, North Carolina Central. Diversity is so important, and the, the, the diversity of not just races, but diversity of cultures. That's why the International Festival was so meaningful to me, that I could participate in that. That was really meaningful. I told people, the deacons, 
because I'm the chairman of my deacon board at my church. That means, and let me tell you about the Baptist faith. We believe in the same God. We sing a little bit more gospel, what they call bumpity bump music, than hymns. <laughs> and someday you may come to see on Baptist church and you'll see us jumping all around. Doesn't mean that we have St. Vitus dance or some kind of a, a jumping beat in our side of our. It just means that we have the power of the Holy Spirit. And it, 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 it enacts us and it triggers us to do all kinds of things that may, may think that you're thinking that we're crazy. I, and last time I checked in the Old Testament, by the way, David danced out of his pants. <laughs> I'm not going to dance out of my suit. What would it be if I do? Please hit me over my head, John, if I try to do anything as crazy as that. Um, this is the thing that I do know about how I've come as far as I've come. And I've got a ways to go. Is that my example of humility in Philippians 2 talks about Jesus humbled himself like a bond servant. How many people know what a bond servant I did some research on the Mennonite church. I wanted to find out what I did. I know what the Baptists do. We have two or a couple of ordinances that you do practice communion and baptism. We believe in uh, immersion under the water and then you come up anew. Uh, John, it, you know, John the Baptist baptized Jesus and he said, But there will be one who comes after me that is greater than me. And his name is the Messiah. They did not even recognize the Messiah after he was dead and came out of that tomb. He walked for 40 days. And on the road to Emmaus, Mary didn't even recognize him. There was a poet that said, most people after they're dead, people don't remember you no more. The good we oft do is oft interred with our bones, Shakespeare said. But Titus, the book of Titus in the New Testament says, while we wait for his glorious appearance, he is zealous for a church that will do his good works. Now one of your good works is that, I know that in the Mennonite faith, that you wash the feet of your brethren. Now, I do not suggest you run up here with a bucket and wash my feet. Woe well, unto you if you do. <laughs> but that is a mark and sign of humility, and it is a sign that you have been possibly converted. Another word, conversion, is proselytized to the name that is above that is above all names, Jesus the Christ. I know that the Mennonite faith and the Baptist faith, even though there may be a little bit of a space in there for gospel, and I, I suggest you go and listen to some gospel, <coughs> maybe be uh, uh, challenged to sing a little bit, not yet. Mixed with my education is that humility. Because as a judge, I have an opportunity to get real boastful because of the power of my pen. I can do all kinds of stuff. Sign bench points. Order somebody into my court. Order them into jail. You come in that crazy in my courtroom, I'll tell the sheriffs with a gun, Sheriff, get this guy, get him out of my courtroom right now. And they'll listen to me. My wife thinks I have a cush job because everybody says, all right. When I go home, nobody's rising. Everybody's telling me to sit down. Behave. Or we'll put you out of here. So mixed with my education in school, I also went to a suburban Bible institute after I graduated from Swarthmore. I wanted to get some more learning in the Bible. I did New Testament survey, I did Old Testament survey. I learned about the king in Chronicles. I learned about the judges, a judge named Deborah, a woman judge. I learned about uh, the book of the Old Testament books. I learned about Isaiah. By the way, did everybody, does anybody know that Isaiah, how many men is that? He was sawed in half. Paul was hung upside down. Every disciple of Jesus Christ was met with a very brutal death because they were followers of him. And I suggest to you that you too may be get persecuted for following him. However, the good news is that you have the gift of eternal life. And last time I checked, that means there's no more pain and suffering. I go to so many funerals as the chairman of the deacon board. So many people in caskets that are laid out front. And I don't particularly like them. It's no. But their victories, in a sense, their transitions, because people, I suggest, go on to glory. Now, that's, you guys at the age of 14 through 17, that you're way beyond it. You want to get to the track teams, you want to get to the basketball tournaments, you want to go to the mall, you want to go shopping, dating. Well, I suggest that even in dating, there's going to be some wars that you have to go through. They're called hormones. Sometimes hormones get in the way. I'm, and that, and the words of course come. That's all I'm going to say about hormones. <laughs> I'm not going to get involved in that nonsense right now. Truly, I will suggest to you folks that a church is merely a hospital, an emergency ward of some sort for broken people.
people just like me. I am a broken paw pup described himself as dog. Who knows what dog is? It don't smell good. He called himself dog. He said that uh, he is imperfect. Paul was whipped 30, 40 minus 1, it says in the New Testament, 39 times. He went to prison. He, the prison broke open. He converted souls. On the road to Damascus, he was Saul, and he became Paul. You know the story. I know you do Bible reading. And he was blinded. And God takes imperfect, weak people, Moses, who stuttered, and used his brother Aaron to preach and free, and, and free the slaves from Egypt, the Israelites, and split the Red Sea. That same God is in this room right now, even as you may cause to yawn. I just saw some yawn. <laughs> However, the good news is that even though you're yawning, if that's you, you're still alive and Christ is inside of you. How do you know, Judge Page? I know because I know. I know the power of him who's sovereign. And if you trust in him, he will get you through every single war. Everything. He'll get you through haters. The book of Psalm 35 says, it says that for haters, people who hate you, for all this cyberbullying nonsense that I see coming up in my courtroom, Stay away from it. He says in the book of Psalm 35, David said, for those who will hate me, I'll dig a pit for them. Dig a pit for them. Contend with them, Lord. It says, and then it says, may the angels of the Lord chase them down. May their days be dark and slippery. And, and it says, may evil, may ruin overtake their lives by surprise. I asked my pastor, why does he say by surprise? He said, that's God. When he gets mad, he, he's, he's patient. He's slow to anger, but when he's ready to body slam you, he will do it. Now, the good news is that he did that with Jonah. He threw him into a well, and then Jonah came out because he was going back to his backslide. Some of us backslide. I backslide. Judge Page is backslide. I grew up in a neighborhood where there were guns and knives, and some of my friends died from gang war. I grew up in a group in Germantown in Philadelphia. I went to Wagner Junior High and then to Central, which is the academic school. But there was guys that used to try to beat me up every day. I was a small guy, still am. <clears throat> However, I didn't have any guns or anything on me. I suggested you, my parents prayed for me, and they sent angels. And they said that Jesus could call down a legion of angels. How many people know that a legion is 6,000 armed? He calls down a legion or multiple legions. Whenever you're in trouble, I just pray. God send out a legion of angels. We don't know whether the angels are in this room right now. They could be. They may be helping me speak. The washing of the feet is a mark of humility. The Lord's Supper, the table that we have that says, and do this in remembrance of me. I preside over that as the chairman of my deacon board. And I, we do it in a very solemn fashion. We have bells and we have the organ play, the pipe organs, and we have the lights dimmed down. It's the most crescendo, the top, focal point, the cross in the church at communion. Everything is soft because that's when the, uh, Jesus met with his disciples. He knew then that he would have to leave the earth. He told them. He knew Judas would betray him. He knew that because he has what Ephesians. Ephesians 1 says he has foreknowledge of everything. He knew that through foreknowledge that, that Noah was going to be in the ark. He knew that through foreknowledge that you would be here at this very precise time listening to me. I understand through my research that uh, this body, this Mennonite body, um, has uh, a tradition not only of submitting themselves to the humble, feeding, feeding the poor, and washing the feet, but global perspective. That one of the things that John asked me to speak about: How does your faith walk? How does it help you with your judging? Uh, let me give you a little background. I, I was a board of directors at Arcadia University, just up the road in Glenside. And for 13 years, I was on that board of directors. I was a uh, chairman of the Academic Affairs Committee. And Arcadia, if you know anything about Arcadia, uh, professed to have one of the best global uh, abroad study programs in the world, bringing people in from China, Japan, Africa, Tanzania. Tasmania, uh, all over the world, Argentina, uh, and bringing them into the diverse group and teaching them their studies. And then the students will go over their their countries and get their credits and learn about the world. I suggest to you, you must, and I couldn't do this in high school. I never did all that travel. I'm going to go to Hawaii for vacation in August, so I'm getting out of here. Uh, but I have not been to Argentina. I have not been to Africa. You do have 
have a chance to do those things. Take your faith walk. I, our church just began a very uh, uh, substantial uh, mission in missions ministry. We're going to go to Haiti, it's countries where they don't they have living huts, mud huts, and don't have electricity, don't have the things you take for granted, don't have glasses. We're going to put in a basket of glasses that, are, that people don't use anymore. Cell phones. They don't even have cell phones. We live and die by our testing. Maybe somebody in here testing right now. I hope not. It's probably somebody. I feel my phone buzzing right now. I'm not going to answer it. Steve Jobs gave us a gift. He died early. How many people know who Steve Jobs was? And we can't even find out where this airplane, the Malaysian airplane is. I can tell you somebody who knows exactly where it is. And everybody, all 200 plus people. And that's the sovereign God. And we, the scripture of Corinthians says, now we know in part, only bits and pieces of why your boyfriend doesn't like you. Only bits and pieces of why you just get a job. Only bits and pieces of why maybe your parent died early. Only bits and pieces of why somebody has AIDS. Only bits and pieces of now we know in part. But then Corinthians says, we shall know fully, even as we are fully known. God, in 139, the song says, he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. Ah, uh, that's God. Now that God needs to be a part of your life. My son, by the way, Gary, he's at Penn State main campus. He's a senior. He went to Argentina for global study at Penn State. And he's stayed with a Spanish-speaking family for, for four months. He, he's bilingual now. My oldest daughter is bilingual. Uh, she's been spent a lot of time in Panama. Uh, I suggest that you do as much global study and global awareness as you can. It will make you well-rounded, and it will complete your race that Paul talks about as you go towards the goal line of life. Life will give you some twists and turns. I guarantee it. You will not escape some down moments. You will not escape them. Be sure to know that. However, I suggest that when you leave Christopher Dot, those who are graduating, I know there's some graduates coming. How many people are in the seniors here? Raise your hand. All right, this is for you. I suggest that after you graduate, you co-mingle, you assimilate, you mingle, you negotiate, you will have the power to do that through God. Let me tell you something, I don't care how many, what your average is, 3.5, 3.9, 3.7, 4.0, 4.3, doesn't matter. I talked to law students at Drexel University Law School a couple years ago, and I told them, they said, Judge, we can't get jobs. I got a 3.5 average. I said, what you have to do is you have to volunteer. You have to get into the pit. You have to do some volunteer work. Get into the head of those who can give you jobs. And nowadays, when you get a job, it's not because you went online. That's too much cyber stuff. And it goes into the cyber space trash can most of the time, unless somebody's made a phone call. Well, how do you get into the head of the person making the phone call that knows you? You have to get into the relationship. And that's what global study does. You meet people. You meet people like me, you may get my card after this. By the way, I invite each and every one of you into my courtroom in Montgomery County in Norristown anytime you want to come. If you want an externship, you want an internship, I'll try to hook you up. That's what they say, that word hook up, that's a vernacular of German town. I hope you understand what I'm talking about uh, when I say hook up. I won't be able to hook everybody up, I'm going to do my best. This is what the book of James says. It, listen to this, it says, life is but a myth. Psst. Right? You're only here for three scores, 60 years, three times 20, plus 10, if you are in good health, if you're favored. God favors me. He gave me my parents to look at me and, and get a robe on. He didn't have to do it. He, as a matter of fact, he didn't have to, have to wake me up this morning. He did. He allowed me to sleep and slumber last night. My car started up. My car was in a shop last week. Could be my, my, uh, my uh, water pump broke. I didn't get real mad. I got a little sad. But he works all that stuff out for us. Those are small, minor things. Death is more important. Death takes on victory. I will tell you that as a judge in Montgomery County, sitting up with civil cases, family court cases, criminal cases, criminals are, cr criminals are nothing but us that got a bad break. Some of them are, then they turn nasty, and then they become, they, they, they do bad, bad things. And then I have to really put them in prison for a long time. I'm just, I am, I am obligated to do that as, as my oath. However, I'm a second chance God, a, a judge. Uh, God is a second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, tenth chance God. I, I uh, try to be 
Christ type. Uh, what I can tell you is that um, as a judge of Montgomery County, I'm not a judge just for African Americans. I'm a judge for Latinos, white, Mennonites, Asian, brown, green, orange, glow in the dark. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> you do a crime, I don't care what color you are. You're going in. It, but I will also give whatever chance you need to, so you can make it through this thicket called life. Life is nothing but a thicket, a race. And we can win this race. I suggest to you full well. You are equipped, students of Christopher Dock. You have a great tradition here. Use that tradition. Use every tool that you have been given and blessed with. Your tool is different from your, your neighbor's tool. Rick Warren, the guy whose son committed suicide, is one of the most prolific writers who wrote a book called uh, uh, The Purpose Driven Life. Some of you should read this. Some of you have read it. Some of your parents have read it. Uh, he talks about everybody has a purpose here on land. And my gifts are different than your gifts. And your gifts are different than your teacher's gifts. God, through his foreknowledge, gives us. He elects who he knows is going to accept him, by the way. He has already elected you. Let me give you some things that I think that I, you should take with you. You may not remember a thing I've said when you leave this room. Maybe some people in here are hungry. I don't know. Uh, when I took the bar exam to become a lawyer, we had to take a bar exam. That's one of the most difficult exams. It's two days long. Most of it's an essay part and it's a multiple choice part. Let me talk to you about the multiple choice part. If you don't pass that, you don't become a lawyer. Uh, there's 200 questions. I read the book that trained me in the study guide and said, interesting, at the very last page of the 200 page training manual said in bold print, be a sport, be prepared to miss a lot. I suggest to you that got me past the bar because I was prepared, I could still miss 33% um, of the exam and still pass on the multiple choice. So if I didn't know it, okay, be a sport, boom, 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 go to the next question. In life, be a sport, you're going to miss some things. Just try to reach your target most of the time. Never step on nobody's neck. And this is what I learned as a judge, too. I, I learned not to, to just say hello to the, the people in high positions. I say hello every day to the tip staff, the guy that gets me work, the guy that cleans my bathroom. They are sons of daughters of God, too. And if you don't do that, woe unto you, because they may raise up. They may win the lottery someday, and then they may be your ball. Amen, lights. <laughs> Amen. To that, second thing I want you to know, these are, these are Chuck's golden nuggets that I'm giving you, I hope. There's a, there's a journey that Paul went on, it's called Troas. He went through an area called Troas, uh, which uh, in on his itinerant journeys to speak to the Gentiles. And they were, eventually the Gentiles were grafted in, and the New Testament talks about the grafting, engrafting of the Gentiles. The Israelites were the chosen people of God, but the Gentiles, we, me, you, uh, some of us were to graft it in. And by virtue of that, he had to travel through these, these areas of the country, the area of Israel and uh, Pamphylia and Derby and Lystra. But to get to Lystra and Derby so he could preach to the Gentiles, he had to go to an area, through an area called Troas. Well, Troas was a, the terrain was rough. They, they, they were trying to kill Paul. Uh, they were backslidden people. And it was a place where Paul met most opposition. They tried to take his death. There were raging storms. Geographically, the terrain was not kind. Uh, but to get to Lystra, his destiny, he had to go through Troas. I suggest to you that Troas, for me, was I had to take three times before I became judge. I had to wait 15 years and, 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 and go into the event and knock on doors. And they didn't want me, some people didn't want me to become judge. Said I was too young. I didn't look like a judge. Amen, lights. Uh, and that I, I wasn't ready to be a judge. That was a Troas experience. I lost sleep, I lost uh, time, I lost time with my family because I had to go out and keep on knocking on doors. I kept on going, perseverance. And Romans 8 says, perseverance is, brings character and character brings hope and hope doesn't disappoint us because he poured out his spirit into our lives. I suggest to you, you too probably will have some Troas experiences, the geographic terrain of your life may be rough. You, your girlfriend may go to another guy. Your boyfriend may go to another guy. You may flunk an exam. <laughs> uh, I flunked a couple of exams in Swansford. That was good. I don't care about that exam right now. Uh, but God does put those pits, those quagmires, those troads. Paul experienced even the, the, when he was on the road to Damascus. That was a tro That was a preliminary troads for him. Next up, and I'm going to close soon. Uh, the book, this book right here, is very meaningful to me. I'm going to tell you some things. This book is called Jesus Calling, and 
daughter when she graduated from the eighth grade from Broken Door. It's by Sarah Young. And it says, I know that's the bell for closing, but I'm, let me just read to you a part of what this says. And this is coming out of Philippians 4, 6. Learn to trust me in all situations, the tough ones as well as the easy ones. Trust me when you don't understand what's going on. Trust me when everything seems to be spinning out of control. That's God speaking. Jeremiah 29. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Plant your gardens, he told the people in the Babylonian captivity that were captive for 70 years. He said, I promise to restore you if you plant your gardens and continue to have your families. And you will have a future and you will have hope. He did just that. And I suggest to you, in your Troas experiences, he will restore every single one of you. And some of you will become judges, some of you will not. Some of you will be airplane pilots, some of you will be doctors and nurses and street cleaners. Be the best whatever you need to do. In closing, I will suggest to you that in my faith, while God has taught me all these things, he's still teaching me. And one of the things that I sing uh, at my church is a song that t keeps me going. And I'm just going to give you a couple of words of this, just so you take this away. I hope you understand that I am a child of God, that I make mistakes on we. But my, in my weakness, I am strong. And I know that in Baptist faith, we complain about all kinds. As deacon chairman, I see people complaining about too much dust over here. Last night, I didn't. The fire didn't sing good enough. Uh, I didn't sleep good enough. My boyfriend left me. All this, this, this is what I know. As I look around in my life, and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And listen to this. Just, just, if you want to close your eyes, you can just listen to this. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when I look around,